So now that you have your projector as well as the projector location finalized, we can go about creating the final setup and the mount. The objective is to have the projector mount securely as well as keep it safe from the elements. This was by far one of the most underrated tasks during the entire projection mapping process. Though the objective is pretty straightforward, there are hurdles in accomplishing this task. One of the ways you could accomplish this task is just get a ready-made projector enclosure. As you can see, the price is a little bit on the higher side. It was slightly out of my budget. That is one reason I didn't go about this. But if this works for you, this is certainly a great option to save time and effort. Another option is to head to Digital Pressworks. This is an amazing site with lots of helpful information when it comes to projection mapping. This site does have detailed step-by-step -step instructions to create your own projector enclosure. If you're good with woodworking, this is a great path. Sadly, I'm terrible with woodworking, so this is not a path I could pursue. This site also sells projector enclosures. As you can see, there are multiple options with and without projectors. The price may seem a little bit on the higher end, but this does come with other accessories like FM transmitters, fans, speakers, ground anchors, etc. So do check this out if this works for you. For me personally, I couldn't choose any of these solutions firstly because some of them were extremely pricey and beyond my budget. Next up, my house is on a hill and I need to have the assembly five to six feet above ground. So I couldn't use the other solutions either. And that is the reason I had to come up with my own solution. Let me walk you through the details of the enclosure I created. Now, after all that effort we have put into creating shows, there's nothing worse than your house no longer matching your mapping. There's a lot of variables at stake here, like your grass could change in length over a period of time. The ground surface could be altered over months and years. I believe the setup should be flexible enough to account for these variables. I have personally found myself trying to stuff rocks under my setup, trying to skew it so that my mapping matches my house. So therefore my aim was to create a setup wherein there was enough flexibility to account for all these variables. So it's time to get to the box. I've got my tools all handy and we're ready to go. But sadly, all I have is good ideas of what the box should be. I'm not very handy with tools for that. I've called in some expert help right here. Here's my father-in-law driving in all the way from St. Louis. Every son-in-law refers to his father-in-law as an expert, so I don't know how legitimate that is, but regardless, we did get together some pretty nice equipment here C for this. Considering I'm just paying him in pizzas, I'm pretty happy. We took an inexpensive container from Walmart with a top that'll snap on and seal. We cut a small piece of plywood that would fit inside the um, bottom of these risers on the bottom of the uh, container so that it made it much more stable and secure. We cut out some holes for two cooling fans that will pull cool air in to the inside of the box because the biggest engineering challenge we had was to get around the overheating of the projector. To solve that, we just got a dryer duct or furnace duct, cut a hole and stuffed the furnace duct in at approximately the area where the projector exhausts all the hot air. That blows the uh, hot air out through the furnace duct. The cool air is coming in, which also helps the movement of air and the projector heating problem was solved. And by the way, in case you're wondering, the reason I choose to put fans at the bottom is that's the easiest way to waterproof. You can put fans on the side, but there is a slim chance when it's raining and the wind is flowing in the direction of the fan airflow, you might end up pulling in some water droplets as well. And that's why I prefer to put fans at the bottom, sucking cold air in. And as for why do I not use the fans to push air out, the main reason I do not do that is because I already have a vent to the side of the box and there are extremely strong projector fans already pushing air out so if I put a much slower fan in the path of the projector fan it will only slow things down because a $15 fan is not better than the fan provided within the projector those are much stronger fans and during the November and December month the temperature out there is pretty low so bringing even a little bit of cold air in works We've got a hole here that we cut for the cord to come in for the power strip. So there will only be one cord sticking out of this box. You'll be able to unplug one cord, take out a couple of screws, and carry the whole thing in at night. 
where it can be safe, secure, weatherproof. And uh, worked out very, act very nicely, actually. It's very lightweight and uh, strong enough to do the job. So this is what the finished product looks like with the lid on top. Um, you'll see we have the space for the glass for the projection to actually go through right here. We cut all these holes, by the way, in this plastic container with a hot knife product, nothing special, just a hot knife fitting that goes in the end of a soldering iron. It's like an X-Acto blade with a number 11 blade that heats up. You gotta be a little bit careful using that because it's very hot and also cutting through this plastic uh, releases some pretty noxious plastic fumes. So you need to be careful and use a well-ventilated area. So here's what our completed project looks like. We have the projector mounted inside, the ductwork lined up with uh, hot air exhaust. We have the lens pretty much centered in the glass here. One of the key items is we used a projector mounting stand that you can angle many different angles so that the projector position is going to be correct for the house you're projecting it on. That takes out the need to constantly be adjusting and fiddling with a tripod or adjusting the way the tripod is sitting in your yard. So over the time, you may choose to project from a different side of your house, somebody else's house, a different location in front of your house, and that multiple position uh, adjustable projector mount makes it very easy to adjust, swivel, rotate up and down your projector so everything's nice and square. Here are some of the specifics for my enclosure. With regards to the box, I just got it from Walmart. It costs about 12 bucks. The dimensions of the box should depend ideally on the dimensions of your projector. As a rule of thumb, it is recommended to have at least six inches of space on either side for heat dissipation. Pick a box that is strong enough to withstand the elements, but is also soft enough so that you can cut through it easily. I chose to go with a clear material. The clear material makes it easy to mark holes and align screws as compared to an opaque material. I do understand that the plastic box looks kind of cheap and you might want to go for something like a DIY wooden box, but there are significant risks to the DIY box. There are plenty of joints which could leak. Even if you do a great job at the time of box building, the box has to hold up to weather elements like rain, snow, none of which is good for wood. It has to hold up to those weather elements year over year. And one leak is all it takes to ruin thousands of dollars worth of equipment. So that's why I pre personally prefer a plastic box since there are absolutely no joints for the box to leak. Next up, fans. I got the fans from Amazon, both of them as a package cost about 15 bucks. The fans are powered using a USB, so therefore you can use any of your phone charger blocks to power these fans. Next up, the projector mount. This projector mount costs about $14 and is completely versatile. It gives the ability to tilt sideways about 15 degrees. It, it also gives you the ability to tilt forward and backward. You can even turn the projector around 360 degrees. That truly helps add flexibility to the projector enclosure. Finally, and for my particular case, I did have to use this tripod. This is a pretty sturdy tripod. I did go through a bunch of research on Amazon to find this one. The height adjustment is from 46 inches to 79 inches, which is over six feet high, capable of supporting over 30 pounds, which should be plenty good. Another advantage of using a tripod is you can adjust the height and tilt and easily maneuver the tripod to places when you wanna change the location. A quick tip, in case you end up using this particular tripod, the knob setting right here that is responsible for tilting the tripod forward and backward is not the sturdiest. Especially with 20 pounds of weight, having it set forward is not the most reliable. So I suggest remove the circular knob and replace it with a nut and washer worth about 20 cents, tighten it with a vice grip, and this setup should be rock solid. So the way I have my setup is I have the entire enclosure fastened to this tripod using four screws. So I can unhook those four screws and move my projector in and out of the house. I also used a vent from Lowe's, which cost about five bucks. So finally, if you happen to use the exact same materials that I did, the box, the dryer vent, the fans, and the projector mount, it should cost you under 50 bucks for the entire setup. And in case you happen to need the tripod, the setup should be about 100 bucks. Finally, to make the projector thief-proof, to be honest, there's no such thing as being 100% thief-proof. 
what I'm personally planning to do is I'm planning to use ground anchors so that I can fasten my tripod legs to the ground and use a bike lock to ensure they stay in place as well as have measures in place so that my enclosure is fastened to the tripod. Here's the final setup in action. It does the job. I must admit it's not the prettiest. You can decorate it so that it looks part of the theme. I'm personally just gonna put like a piece of cloth and give it eyes and stuff so that it looks like a big shapeless ghost. But you might have better ideas so feel free to do so. A couple of accessories that are required are a media player so that you can play the files without a laptop. Next up, when it comes to sound, you don't want the vibrations of the speaker to shake the projector. So I personally suggest an external waterproof speaker just placed outside. I would suggest against using Bluetooth because usually Bluetooth transmitters have a two second delay and you don't want your audio and video to fall out of sync. So just use an aux cable and a waterproof speaker. You may also use an FM transmitter for people sitting in the car. You have a crazy amount of options when it comes to speakers, FM transmitters and media players. I'll just make sure to have links to a couple of ones that I would recommend. Now, over the years, I've made some enhancements to the box. Let me walk you through them. First and foremost, as you can see, the vent looks pretty ugly. Not only is it ugly, since it sticks out, it's prone to accidents. So I had to find a better solution for that. I've updated my setup to use floor vents instead. As you can see, it's a much cleaner look. It does not stick out. The vent function still works while keeping water out and it still does this in a budget friendly fashion. So there you go. Moving forward, you can use this method for a much better looking box. The link to all the equipment I've used is in the description box below. Now, if you absolutely want something better than plastic, in the next video, I'll show you how to design a metal enclosure in a budget friendly fashion. In addition to that, if you're not a fan of this projector mount setup that adds significant height, I'll show you an alternate way to make projector adjustments that might be better than the projector mount I've used here. So stay tuned guys.